Hello all you awesome people, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing well, uh, still working on the potion room. It's, uh, it's coming along. I've been working on the dispenser area, so I set up some ladders here. Just to get up here for now. And... Oh, hello. There's a, there's a cave up to the surface here. Yeah, so I cleared out some space to set up our dispensers to hold our 12 items or whatever, 12 different items. So I gotta hook all these buttons over here. You know, there's 12 buttons. We gotta hook those up to 12 different groups of dispensers up here. So it'll go something like this. We'll have a water stream here actually fit pretty nice. That will go there to the center, so if any item falls in these streams, it'll go to the center, like so. Then I'll have... Um, still deciding what to do about the dispensers. I was thinking originally that I have 10 for each group. Oops. Like this. There are better ways I could position these um, that would take less space, but I'm worried patches might change the way uh, like items going through blocks works. Like otherwise, I would just put put them like this, like right next to each other, and they'll items will fall down through the block. But I'm gonna keep it like this for safety. Yeah, so ten per per ingredient. Uh, I was thinking I could do five per ingredient and then just send two pulses, but really that would uh, make things a lot more complicated and this is just not a bad way of doing it. So I'm going to try to run wire along the top of these dispensers. If that eventually gets patched, I should be able to do it in a way that will work still. So, if you didn't know this, you can place wire on dispensers if you place it next to a block by it, like this. Otherwise, if you right-click on a dispenser, you just you just look at it. So, I think that would do the trick here. Maybe we'll try it out. Sounds like it. Let's test it. Uh, let's split this up. So in total, there's going to be, oh, I don't know, over a hundred of these dispensers. They'll be good because I'll use them for storage as well. Like, I got so many spider eyes, I wouldn't mind having a place to keep them. Yep. Dispensed five, that's what we want. Perfect. So the wires will connect over here, probably. like this, and then there'll be another water stream right here, which will go off to here with uh, fence gates to hold the water in place. So uh, give me one second and I will rig, it, rig that all up here. Alright guys, I got this finished now. We got our uh, ingredient dispenser arrays all set up here uh, with water streams with the redstone groupings. Uh, in total there's a hundred dispensers here and ten groups, but we need twelve groups total, so I'll either have to split these up a little bit and do some fancier wiring, like to send more than one pulse. So, so like, uh, we need ten ingredients to come out, but we could, like, just have five dispensers full and send two pulses to that. That would be like five times two is ten. Or for the glass bottles, for example, we could have ten dispensers and send three pulses to get thirty bottles out like we need. Uh, which isn't as difficult to do as I thought it was going to be. Uh, I'll show you in a second. Uh, first I'll show you this working. I got a button here which will power this. Ten items get shot out of the ten dispensers and they fall down and then they make their way to the center. 
Uh, for potions I'm going to make more often, I'll obviously want those closer to the center so it doesn't take as long. If I had ice, I could speed this up, but I don't. And as far as I know, you can't get ice with silk touch anymore, which sucks, but that's the way it is. Yeah, so that's up here. So we'll be standing here. The items will fall on us. Uh, yeah, I did a little test. I thought I was going to need three repeaters to send a double pulse to a dispenser, but you don't, actually. Uh, you just need one repeater. You see it shot two. And you can have it... If you have it on a two delay, it'll only shoot one, but if you go up to three, then it'll shoot two. So that's the minimum to make that happen. So yeah, it won't be that difficult to send double pulses. So for the, the potions I won't be making as often, like... Uh, the regeneration potions, because I probably won't get a million gas tears or anything. I might, uh, I'll probably just have a group of five instead of a group of ten. And in that way, I'll try to get them all to fit in this thing so I don't have to add more dispensers, because this is probably quite excessive as it is. Well, it seems like I'm having problems with the multi-pulsing after all. It's just not working for me like like when I tested it before. Uh, I was trying to do a triple pulse thing here for the glass bottles, but uh, this is what happens. Uh, we'll, we got some cobble in there still. 22. Uh, when I press this button here, it should send out three different delayed signals, and they are at least three torch delays apart from each other so this one's one this is four and this is eight so should send out three signals that the dispenser can take but uh, according to my last test but that's not actually the case in total only one got shot out there even though it sounded like five pulses went out four pulses went out somehow from that. So yeah, I just we're just gonna do it the simple way. Added 40 extra dispensers though. Not a big deal. We'll, we'll have more storage space doing that. It's just a, a cross here with uh, uh, 10 per arm. So if I connected here and here it, it, we would have 30 for the glass bottles or something like that. So up here, I'm gonna. 30 of these are gonna be for the glass bottles, and 10 are gonna be for the nether wart. And that will just that'll just simplify everything. And I can load these from below, so it's not terrible. Okay. Okay, I was walking by my farm here, and a bunch of squid just fell to their death. Missed it though. But that's what happened. And it seems Endermen are still getting down in my cave. Really annoying. Alright guys, I got lots to show you now. I worked on the potion room for a good three hours at least, and half that time was probably on the wiring, just because it was really tedious. But uh, yeah, this is it. Uh, it's still not complete, but got a lot done on it and uh, I decided since I put over 500 redstone into this thing that I'd go all out and I replaced the entrance with iron blocks and lapis very expensive elegant um, then I also noticed the shape of this room was almost exactly the same sorry these guys are annoying let's get rid of these guys first uh, I needed a lot of black for the potion room, so I ran around hunting squid, and then right when I finished that, I found some in the potion room itself, which was pretty ironic, now that I don't need them. Oh, there's still some up there. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get the looting sword 
see if these guys don't despawn or something. Hopefully they'll be around. Yeah, put a lot of time into that. Uh, it's a big project. Be awesome when it's done, though. Let's see, sword, sword, sword. Where are you? There you go. This works on squid. Uh, this is what I was using to get the, all the black wool there. I think one time I even got seven ink sacks from one squid with this, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Let's try it out. Somebody has made a tutorial on the 3x3 door that's really awesome too, but uh, I think I'm going to stick with this one just because it's done. Okay, here we go. First hit, we'll use our pick. And then, got four, five, and three. Not bad. Okay, let's look at the picture. So it's a pixel art of a potion, because it matched the room pretty much perfectly. A little bit different than what I normally do. It's pretty, pretty out there. And somehow I'm going to have to transition from stone brick to this iron, actual iron block door here. Um, and over here we have the actual brewing area. So you'd stand here, and you can hit all the buttons. You can hear that click ev after everyone. Uh oh, I can't reach there. That's just have to stand a little bit closer. That's okay. So yeah, each of these is an individual wire that goes up to the dispensers above, which was a huge pain to do, so, um, oops, some run underneath, some run above, uh, we'll just run through it quick, and then it goes up to redstone torches, which take the signal straight up, other side's the exact same, here is a huge mess, because originally I was doing spiral staircases up for the wire so I wouldn't use wouldn't have to use redstone torches just to speed up the the wire rates I guess the d to lower the delay after the button press let's see how do I get up here uh, there might not be a way to get up here anymore and then uh, hmm there's wire everywhere, basically. I will be putting up this world for download very soon again, so you'll be able to check it out then if you want. Look at these guys. Uh, went all out in here, too. I've got glowstone. Can't remember how much you saw last time. It's been so long that I've been working on this. Uh, on these signs, I will have... Uh, It'll say the ingredient in it, so if I ever come to restock, it'll be simple to find where to put the stuff. It's easy to restock, because everything's down here, or you can reach above. Uh, half slabs are just so I don't fall into the stream below, because if you do that, then you can't get out due to that water glitch most of the time. And yeah, that's about it. Pretty, pretty good. I'm glad it's all done have some repeaters up here to extend the signal so uh, this arm, this arm, and this arm are connected together here and then this one's on its own pretty boring I know I know okay also yeah this is like this is where like three of the torches come up and one of them keeps going up here and one goes to this group here. The other one has to extend all the way around. And it goes to this next group. Then on the other side, much the same stuff happens. It's just running a wire a long distance. So much redstone. And just by chance, I came out right over by my house here. 
I'll be able to have a secondary entrance up here, which is nice. Oh, let's kill some squid. Just hitting them with a pick first so I don't waste my uh, very precious sword here. Excellent. Okay. So for these uh, storage areas, I did them out of wooden planks. I think it uh, mostly because it blends in with the chests pretty good because they're both a similar color. It also blends in with glowstone nicely and sandstone. So that's why I chose that. Uh, so I'll probably keep them three chests high. Below the bottom one is glowstone to brighten up the area. And I'll probably put stairs at the top like this. And that will uh, make it look like a solid block, but it's not, so you can still open the chest, which is pretty cool. And a good tip I got from you guys is I should color code these by putting the wool blocks behind the chest, so you'll still be able to see them. I'm hoping you can color code the chests. I'm not sure if each potion will have its own unique color. But we'll... I don't know, we'll see what happens with that. And then I'll probably have signs saying what's in the chest as well. Uh, we need to work on a ceiling in here, of course. Maybe try to transition from the iron to the wood. If I can think of something. Maybe sandstone would work. I don't know. Uh, what else? I do have iron here as well. I really went all out on this. Still got probably half a stack of them, though. Of iron blocks, solid iron blocks. Because I'm pretty darn rich. Um, for this, I was thinking I will put sandstone blocks above the cauldrons. No, brewing stands. Yes. And then, uh, I should probably make this sandstone too. Just so it can connect together. And then behind that, I'll probably put glowstone. Uh, yeah, that's good. So I'll do that for all these, and then I'll get a load up my ingredients and it will be done let's try uh... let's try put sandstone here again i'm not good at choosing blocks so if this looks really weird <laughs> uh... this is my best and i'm just not good at it hmm. i don't know <laughs> Anyway, that's the potion room. Function is the most important thing, and I think I got that down pretty good here. So I'm happy. Yep, enchanting another shovel here. Still trying to get Badge's spoon. Let's see if we can. Fortune 3 on a shovel. Okay. I was just trying to think what I could use the Fortune 3 for on a shovel. It seems almost completely useless, but I guess there's probably a few things it'll work on, like gravel. Get flint every time, I guess. That's kind of cool. Let's make a huge gravel pillar. Or a short one, because this is taking a long time. Let's see how quick we can get down with our efficiency for it, too. Yeah, it still takes a while. Yeah, flint every time, that's cool. Uh, I want to see if it works on these mushrooms. Two, two. Don't really harvest a whole lot of mushrooms, so I don't know. I don't have anything to compare it to. I don't think it's helping. Could be wrong. Um, probably could get more s seeds. Uh, 
but that's pretty much useless. So, yeah, I'll probably just use it like a regular shovel. Alright, back in the potion room again. Still got to do some stuff, but uh, it's coming along. Uh, I got it organized. That was a, another big part. And I even put some ingredients in the dispensers, so we will be able to test this this episode, which is good. Uh, I'll show you how I organize this, So, So in the middle, these are the most... The two most important buttons here. The top one's glass bottles, and the bottom one's nether warts. So I'll use those for every every group of potions we make. Uh, and then on the left here we have the the extra boosters you can add, like redstone to make it longer, glowstone to make it uh, more more powerful or or better, I guess. I don't know how to say it higher tier with glowstone and then uh, gunpowder to make it a splash potion so those are the three optional boosters you can add and then you have our positive boosts uh, gas tiers and you, you guys told me how to say this I'm gonna get it wrong because I can't remember what you said glistering melons over here so these uh, are two these two help you to recover. Over here we have blaze powder and magma cream which are both uh, related to blaze and they this is for strength potions, this is for fire resistant ones. So they're kinda grouped together. Then over here there's also sugar. These are what I'll probably make the most of of anything. And then we have uh, two negative ingredients, the fermented spider eyes and then the spider eyes. And you use those to make negative potions like uh, poison, weakness, slow potion, potion of harm. I think there's nine, nine different potions actually, not eight like I thought, or, or seven like I said. Nine is what I've been told. So we have ten groups of chests. We'll use nine of these for the nine different ingredients, and then we'll have one group just for like holding glass bottles or any other random stuff we want. Okay, now let's go up in here. I'll uh, I'll hook up a nice ladder or something once I polish this up more. I got the signs here and the way these are organized I put a lot of thought into it. The potions I will be making more often or the ingredients I'll use more often are closer to the center here so they'll make it to us faster than the ones like over here. This is as far as they'll have to travel. Go like that to the center. It's quite a, w quite a ways. It'll take a few seconds. So redstone I won't be using often probably. Uh, gas tears. I'm not going to get a whole lot of those anytime soon. Glycerine melons. They'll arrive a little quicker. Same with uh, glowstone a little quicker. In the middle we have sugar, like I said I'll be making those quite often so they're going to arrive quickly. Same with nether warts, quickly. Uh, blaze powder is a little bit slower, fermented spider eyes. You use these quite a lot if you're using, if you're making negative potions so I wanted them uh, somewhere in between for, s for delivery speed. Then far away we have spider eyes and magma cream. Probably won't be making a whole lot of those. And let's go up here. Then everything in this cross are will arrive quickly. We got the glass bottles, they'll all arrive quickly. And gunpowder. Probably won't be using gunpowder a whole lot at first, but once I get a mob system going, I'll probably use it a ton. So I wanted that to be a quick delivery item as well. And that's that's about it. Yeah, let's do our first test run here. This is what this has all been about, all this work. Been really looking forward to trying it out finally. So stand about here. Uh, first thing we need, glass bottles. That's this button here. And while those arrive, we can also... Uh-oh. Oh, you know what I did? <laughs> Dang it. Okay, spotted the first mistake. 
Yeah, you know what I did? I, I put a cover over that hole, so the ones from the second layer are going to drop right on top. Darn it. Um, Alright, give me a sec. Alright, that should take care of that problem. So in these dispensers is ingredients. Got the nether wart there, sugar is here, so... Got sugar in. Don't have a whole lot loaded j just yet, but uh, eventually they'll get filled up little by little. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, glass bottles. Should get 30. <laughs> they fall kind of strange. 30, awesome. Okay, so to fill these, just go like. Uh, like this and if we don't have enough inventory space they'll get thrown up onto the ground right at our feet and we just go go around loading them in it's pretty pretty simple you don't have to make a bunch of trips back and forth to the chest to pick up your water, water bottles this way which is nice um, I'm a little worried that those dispensers are going to shoot out over top each other now. Because in the, that first test, there was one. We only got 29 bottles instead of 30. One landed on a dispenser on the other side. So we'll see how this goes. That might have just been a very rare case. And 30. So as you can see, it's kind of tedious. That took probably close to a minute just loading up the bottles but it's a lot easier than it would be if you did this just randomly okay now we get our nether warts we should get 10 9 10 great so really you could just press this button and press this one and you get the two at the same time and then you go around loading loading these up make awkward potions from the water bottles which uh, I think you can make every potion from an awkward potion so that's why we're doing it like this instead of making thick potions and mundane potions uh, you pretty much just do an awkward potion every time good and this one should be about done yep Okay, and then we would choose our final, well not necessarily final, but our next ingredient to make the potion. So let's do a sugar one first. Sugar, is that button there. Sugar falls down, we should get 10 again. Great, and we just go all the way around like we did with the nether wart. And once you do all this, you'll have 30 haste potions. Is that what they're called? Sw swiftness potions. So, it's not a bad way of mass producing them. And then if you wanted to make a swiftness potion level 2, you would just add glowstone. Or if you wanted to make a splash potion, you just hit this button for the gunpowder. But, yeah. All done. We got our potions brewing away here. And that's the potion room. Pretty cool. I like it. Well, everyone, I guess I'm going to end the episode here today. Uh, we got a lot done again. And if you have any ideas on how to improve this or to make it look better, I always have a listening ear. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. I'll for sure read it. Um... Still got a bit of work to do. It's not supposed to be open like this, and around this door isn't done yet. But yeah, turned out pretty good so far. I like that door. Um, probably won't work on this next time though. We'll start a new project because I need a, a break from it, and that one's up and working now, so there's no real urgent need to polish it yet. 
But yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I will see you again next time with a new project.